So, uh, welcome, Owen, right? Oh, Oren. Oren, I'm uh -huh. sorry. Don't Oren, be. Oren Waters. That's me. And, um, of course, you and your backing group have been on countless albums and many millions, sellers, gold records, That's platinum right. records. That's you have, like, what, 115,000? Uh, quite a few, records. quite a few, yeah. T tell me a little about uh, gold records. What's it like when you first get a gold record? How does that feel? We started, we we actually started so young that it was uh, quite exciting to um, have the opportunity to hear some of your work. It actually is now on the radio at a young age. As a matter of fact, when we started, we were so young, I would go to elementary school. I'd tell my friends, I'm singing on that song, you know. And so often they said that, uh, no, you're not, you know, because they shouldn't believe it, but it was true. And so it's something that we grew up with. It's been a blessing to us. And, uh, God has blessed me and my family. And now, are they all family members in the yes. waters? Yes, it's all family members. It's four of us, one alto, one baritone, and one tenor, and one soprano. Okay, and their names? Maxine Waters, Julia Waters, Luther Waters, and I uh, Maxine Waters? Uh-huh. Not the politician, no. No. Uh -uh. Okay. No. All right. And I know some of the amazing artists you've worked with in the studio, but other people out there don't tell you me a little about you, you, you ever get to hear a little bit of the background? Well, um, some of the big names, I'll start with some of the most recent. We, because there are certain things that we've done. We've sang on the most uh, played record in the history of radio, which was The Righteous Brothers, You Lost That Love. As a matter of fact, that was the first song that I sang on. We sang on the longest running sitcom in the history of television, the Jefferson theme, which I sing now. The Jefferson oh, thing. On up. The on up. Down. Now we're up in the big league, <laughs> getting our turn in We say on the uh, biggest selling record in the history of records, Just Michael Mr. Jackson's Mr. Thriller. We said, Mama say, Mr. We sang on the um, uh, the oh, most second. played, the biggest played soundtrack in the history of soundtrack, Whitney Houston's Body. Wow. Wow. Yes. Now, tell me a little about what it was working on, what it was like to do with Michael Jackson that session. Michael, well, we actually did. I did Got to Be There, I'll Be There, Never Can Say Goodbye. I saw Mama Kiss and Santa Claus, Rock and Rob, and all that with Michael. Uh, so, it's always been a pleasure to work with someone so talented. And um, you could tell at an early age what who he was going to be. So it's always been a pleasure and honor. Okay, now what can you tell us about Michael Jackson? Yeah, the great Jim Gill stuff I'm talking about. Well, uh, his sensitivity. Very, very uh, sens sensitive individual. Uh, his communication, how he would communicate with animals and things like that, you know, that um, I thought was very unique. And as the time has gone on, it has proved to be unique. Some of the techniques that he used to um, communicate with the animals, he taught me, and I do it now, and it, it still works, yes. Did you visit him up in Neverland? Never in Neverland. Never in Neverland. But, uh, uh, mostly in the studio, visit, over at the house. The yeah. And how did you feel when you heard the sad news about his passing? I couldn't believe it. Where were you? It caught me. I, was, I also teach voice, mm -hmm. so I was at, uh, the, uh, at a college teaching voice, and I um, Somebody came in and said, "Well, he passed away," and it was it was kind of shocking as it was to us all. God rest his soul. Now tell me about uh, maybe a few of the other artists you worked with. Did you remember Neil Diamond? Neil Diamond. That was Crystal Murray. Paul Simon, John Fogarty, Dan Fogarty. I mean, um, John Fogarty, and also some of the stuff, the new stuff, Harry Styles. And um, uh, he would sing that song. Uh, just finished oh, up doing the uh, song uh, the Planet of the Apes, a lot of movies like, yeah, and stuff like that. We did the Lion King and you need to get uh, Jurassic Murder. World, <laughs> from Seattle, uh, Happy Feet, you know, Shrek. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. <laughs> when do you sleep? <laughs> Even when I sleep, I'm thinking about music anyway. Oh yeah, you're uh, dreaming I'm, music. I'm dreaming music. You ever yes, dream a song? Of course. Yeah. Uh, well, As a matter of fact, you're in a dream. Like, uh, yesterday he came to Paul uh, and he was sleeping and he wrote scrambled eggs on his yeah. bedside. Uh, no, that happens all the time. As a matter of fact, I have an adventure that I dreamed on. And it's called the original Foot Free Pillow and we're selling it right now. And uh, one of the things that God blessed me to do.
Very cool. Thank mm, you yes. so much. Thank you, Michael. Nice Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, and best of luck to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> God bless you guys. That was his. his mom used to play that all the time. Nice. Oh, That's why he's seen this. Yeah, Director Bird Reporter. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Michael Lynn. Boom. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Out. Well. <laughs> um, they get, where's the one? Okay. Do this one. Do this one. Okay. Not this. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Do this one. It's going. Michael. Michael. Jim, why don't you just step in here? Okay. Say hello to everyone out there. So, Jim, tell me what brings you here today to uh, be here for Soul uh, Radio USA. Soul Radio USA because my record was in silence. Swing your daddy. Yeah, in London. Right. I'm just grateful to still be here. I tend to kind of isolate. Well, you definitely are here. And uh, thanks to Big Dog Productions putting on this event and raising awareness for uh, victims of the Kingdom of Parliament. It's wonderful. Now, tell me about music. You've been a musician for a while. Tell me about how music can be inspirational in times of trouble. Well, music has been my inspiration since later years. Really? And uh, I used to listen to Paris and Russ, somebody from Nashville Visual. Jazz for me is only the Adams who I'm going to see tomorrow night is Catalina Bar and Grill. I'm glad she's here today. I'm going to see Alita. I'm going to see Alita. I'm going to see Alita. I ain't mad at it. Oh, I need to. This weekend is good to take away. Bumps Black will be new as he. He was the yeah, yeah. Um, Bumps Black will was the guy who orchestrated You Send Me by Sam Cooke. And he became his manager. And he was just a wonderful guy. All right, one more time. I started singing through bumps well, with like people like Eric James, uh, Jay Brown. Because of this cat right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad. We can always have it. Oh, that one is okay. Okay, yeah, why not? <laughs> hey, that was your what was that like? What do you remember about that? Night? <laughs> well, that was a wonderful night. I was a kid, oh literally. <laughs> And uh, James was absolutely my hero. The hardest working man in show business. Hardest working man in show business. And I did a Marriott Hotel here with the uh, wife. I died. Hold on. Really? Yeah, we yeah, were on the show with her. Smile, you're on candid. And uh, <laughs> bumps at us. I'll see you guys. All right, take care. Bye, Oren. It's okay, we're well, going to one third. Thank you, thank you. Special guest appearance. Okay, yeah. Lord In Lord here Lord. with my peeps right here. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us about your song, the one that uh, everyone knows you mentioned Well, Swing Your Daddy, we recorded in 1975 on Chelsea Records. And uh, Wes Farrell was the president of the label. And he was married to Tina Sinatra. Really? Yeah, he was married to Tina. And where was the, um, where was the studio? Well, the record company was at 9300 Sunset Boulevard. So not far from here. Not too far from here at all. Um, Wes was a great guy, and he chose me in an audition to sing the song that was written by Kenny Nolan, who, was, who wrote My Eyes Adored You, and they had one made for the Penny yes. Bell. And then uh, he, he was just a great songwriter. But the record took off, and it went, I think, either number one or number three in England, and I flew over and did a show called Top of the Pops mm -hmm. in London. Very it was famous. like American Bandstand sure. was here. Mm -hmm. so. Now, for those people who might not be familiar with the show, I want you to say There's a little line. Version. Swing your daddy. Oh, the best part I've always sang all my life. Like, oh, Sex and mama, you got his love just out of control. <laughs> Now don't you wanna? That was back in 1975, and uh, a lot of years ago. <laughs> okay, but you still got it. Well, I thank you very much. I'm, I'm singing luck, luckily today with 
a gentleman by the name of DeFrance Forrest, who was, uh, and we sang with the originals from Motown. Really? The, uh, the, the song they had out there was really big, was Baby I'm For Real. Right. And of course, uh, DeFrance, the son of uh, Gene Chandler. He's the son of Gene Chandler, Chandler, and I love Gene. I used to listen to him all the time. He's a teenager on the Book of Earth. Sure. One of my favorite songs. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to hear the story about that. And uh, Jim, thank you so much for stopping by. Why, thank you. And for being you. here with Big Dog Productions and you got it, uh, Soul man. Radio USA. Okay, love uh, sitting here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, three, two, one. So we're here with Carol Dennis, uh, incredible singer and, uh, and uh, inspirational force in soul music, but also um, famous for working with many amazing artists over the years. Um, and it's Carol with one R, unlike how it's supposed to be. Make sure. Well, I kind of stayed covered. So one hour. And so tell us, uh, Carol, what are you up to these days? Well, I'm uh, speaking with a young man that I've worked with for many years. In the church. Uh, I kind of stayed in uh, even though Elder Gary Lanier. We're talking about how we're doing a gospel project together. Um, in the meantime, I'm... Uh, talking with people about different scripts, things like that, and whenever I'm called to do sessions, I do that. And, uh, so, what are your most memorable sessions over the years? Tell people about ones that really stand out in your memory. My most memorable sessions are with Pastor Andre Crouch for Michael Jackson. Which which of the songs? I worked on the History album. And there were some other things sporadically because I'm more uh, drawn to theater. I've done more theater in New York. I was in the cast of The Color Purple. Um, so in and out of that, I've always, I've always remained loyal to Pastor Andre Crouch, who came into my life very early in my theater career and really kind of helped guide me. And, Helped me to know when to say no and how far to let the roles take me. So, uh, because my base and foundation is in Christianity, and uh, I'm a gospel singer by, you know, I was raised in the church, and, and that's always been a part of me. And my prayer was to do live theater, and God allowed me to go to uh, New York to Broadway. But every time I did the show. Somehow the gospel song got designated to me, so I figured that that was God's way of saying, I'll let you go to Broadway, but you will represent me while you're there. And of course, you're wearing a purple dress in honor of the color purple. This is fuchsia. Oh, fuchsia, excuse me. I love fuchsia. Guy, I don't know what color it's, it's my favorite color. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about uh, working with color purple. Did you uh, hang out with Oprah and kind of like, uh, did she buy you a car? Well, I was hoping that she would come in opening night and say, I'm buying you all new condominiums, but that didn't happen. So <laughs> what we did, uh, we were in our rehearsals and Oprah surprised us. We already had backers and uh, the producer for Color Purple asked Oprah if she would be involved and we were in rehearsals, they didn't tell the cast and I think this has been recorded somewhere where we were doing our rehearsals and the doors swing open and in comes Miss Oprah Winfrey and we all just started screaming because uh, we already felt that the first adaptation of uh, The Color Purple in 2005 I had a feeling that it would be historic, um, but with older involved, it just took a little bit. We all just had a little different level, and uh, we were grateful to be involved with her. Opening night, she gave us all these gorgeous watches that she had done, and I recently found out she had it done at some jeweler here in uh, Beverly Hills. I still have that watch? Absolutely, I have my kind of perfect watch, but I've been thinking about... No. <laughs> okay. Did you have a favorite number from that show that uh, was really stand out for you? Well, of course, my opening number of oh, The Good Lord Works in Mysterious Ways. The is interesting because it's Sunday morning. So make a joyful noise, joyful noise, unto the 
Crouch was very uh, uh, strong about making sure that we stayed in an element of prayer in any of the projects that we were doing concerning our bouts with uh, singing with Michael. So we would always start with prayer, and uh, a lot of times we didn't know whether Michael was in the booth or not. Right, um, well, you see the background of it, only <laughs> the backing scenes of everything going on there. But now we are ready. This is the full, beautiful version. With the legends of music, lean on me, he ain't heavy. Just call on me, brother. 
when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on.